Good evening and welcome to the January 22nd, 2015 Environmental Advisory Council meeting of Radnor Township. Our first order of business is to review and approve last our last meeting's minutes, which would have been in uh, uh, November. Yeah. No, no. Sorry. It would have been in um, October. We had an unofficial meeting that never actually happened because of a lack of uh, quorum in um, uh, December. So does anybody have any comments on the October minutes? I'll move to approve them. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, announcements. I do have, uh, I have a page of announcements here. I'll try to be brief about them though. Um, the Chester County Citizens for Climate Protection. This is a group that uh, Sally is active with. Um, they're having a seminar on February 11th called The Merits of Waste Oil as Fuel. Um, they suggest that burning a gallon of biofuel compared to a gallon of fossil-based diesel generates carbon dioxide that was already part of the natural carbon cycle. It produces no sulfur emissions, 26% less carbon monoxide, and 39% less particulate matter. To date, the oil recycling effort has eliminated emissions com comparable to more than 2,000 cars annually. And I believe that's the effort related to the people who are speaking here at this, uh, at this program. Anyway, uh, February 11th, go on to the CCCCP website. Uh, I think it might even be 4CP uh, website. That's in Westchester. Um, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection has extended their alternative fuel vehicle uh, rebate program. Um, this is a $2,000 rebate for large battery system plug-in hybrid electrics and battery electrics. That has been extended till uh, June 30th, 2015, or until they have a, they have a 500 vehicle benchmark, until that benchmark is reached. Um, I believe they have about 150, 150 rebates remaining at this time. And uh, they have some other rebates as well. Uh, for, for other types of vehicles, but that's the big one. Uh, from the Delaware Valley Green Building Council website, they're announcing the Tri-State Sustainability uh, Symposium. That is going to be March 6th at Temple University. They say that it's now in its fifth year. This is a day-long symposium bringing together industry, university, and community leaders to share best practices and ask challenging questions and provide cutting edge information about sustainability in our region. They say it should draw over 800 attendees and feature topics such as net zero, water conservation, green leasing, commercial real estate, art and sustainability, renewable energy, energy star and more. I wanted to mention an article I saw in the New York Times uh, that ranked Philadelphia as the number three destination to go in 2015. Um, I went to Nicaragua last year because it was number three on their, no, number two on their list for, tw for 2013. Um, it's a very cool list. I recommend you guys checking that out. But anyway, Philadelphia made number three on it, uh, which is really impressive, behind Milan and Cuba. Can I... That's, that's a so list, you, and that's a list of 50 destinations. 50, 52. I, 52. I saw the article. 52 destinations. And yeah. somehow today or yesterday, and I'm an avid newspaper reader, I also saw that Philadelphia is ranked as, believe it or not, the second best city in the world for shopping. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And, and, and the number one city is Barcelona, so go figure. Yeah, okay, right behind Barcelona. But we're okay. way up there. We're way up there. Um, this article, uh, this I happen to come across this in the, uh, Pennsylvania Environmental Council website. They're very proud of this uh, ranking and they believe it has a lot to do with their efforts to bring uh, the trails system uh, to, to the state that it's in right now, specifically the, um, the Schuylkill River Boardwalk uh, right there in the heart of town. Um, they, uh, uh, they say that no place else sig signifies greater success in implementing the visions that they created uh, than Philadelphia and its neighbors, especially Chester and Montgomery counties. Um, they say that the Schuylkill River Trail is the first long distance multi-use trail in our region and connects Center City to Valley Forge National uh, Historical Park and far beyond. Um, lastly, 
a note from Sally that she spoke to Kathy Mulroy from the Radnor Library, and she wanted us to know that the uh, library just got noticed last week that the state is awarding the township a grant of $500,000 for their renovation project at the library. The uh, township is going to match that uh, $500,000, and the library itself is going to put in another $250,000 that they raised themselves for a total of $1.25 million. The money will go to a new HVAC system, an elevator, and making the bathrooms ADA compliant. Uh, so then she says, so now plans for the whole renovation project will go forward. They're still looking to raise an additional one million for the entire project to include additions and the revamping of the interior. So I, it's a little confusing to me because 1.25 million seems like a lot for a new HVAC system, an elevator, and bathrooms. But maybe that's what it costs. I don't know. So maybe we get some more information from Sally when she comes back. Anybody else have any other announcements? Um, help me out here. Is it uh, January 31st at the library is the Bird Town? Right, the back, um, backyard count at the library. There's like a talk about the uh, backyard count, which I think happens the following weekend for four days. I think, it's the, I think it's the weekend after. The Great Backyard Bird Count is one of the really big Audubon events of the year, and Radnor has actually had a very good showing in recent years of people counting their birds. It's, it's a fun family project to do generally over President's Day weekend. So it's 10 o'clock on the 31st, January 31st at the library to kind of tell you what it's about and give you some basics on helping you identify birds. You don't have to be an expert, and their snow date is the 7th of February, so I think it's... I think then it's the weekend of the 14th, perhaps, that the count takes place. And then the other thing, uh, the Philadelphia Home Show is going on uh, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. And I know they've got a lot of green vendors there. So I'm to check. It's at the convention center. I think it's 13 bucks to get in. But online, you can get like a ten, uh, $3 coupon. Should I take this moment to talk about the, uh, the events that we have planned for the Wren Rain Garden um, project? Our Workshop is going to be on March 14th, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock at the Radnor Library. Um, and the program is going to focus on how a homeowner can install a rain garden in their yard to help control polluted runoff and uh, reduce the stormwater problem in the township. Um, but the other part of that program is going to be how to use native plants to make that both beautiful and attractive to birds and um, desirable creatures. Um, so that's on March 14th. And then we have a date of April 25th, a Saturday, at the township building, we'll actually be planting the rain garden. So that's the Wren Rain Garden schedule. I'm sorry, where's that located? Where's the rain garden going to be located? It's not located anywhere yet, but if you, um, if you come into the township building, it's in the area, the strip between the access road and the creek immediately on your left as you come in. We've had to cool. On the far side. Yes, between. Be, yeah, no, no, on this side, side of the creek, creek, between the access road and the creek. We've had to um, work with the township to coordinate both location and schedule um, with their plan to build parking. They have a contractor who's scheduled to build the parking at the township. They should be starting in February. So um, the township has assured us that we have every reason to think that we can get the rain garden put in. Was there some talk about putting a rain garden on the other side, the side facing the Little League fields? Um, that there, there was some talk about it. At one point, I thought that that was part of what they were going to do as, as the, develop, the group that developed the playground over there. Um, but since there's absolutely no paved area that would run off into that, it didn't strike, it, it's not as desirable a location. So in this area, we're hoping that it'll be um, quite noticeable, quite prominent and attract people's attention and encourage homeowners to do similar projects at home. Thank you. And manage the runoff from uh, some of the paved surfaces. So we hope. Cool. Uh, did I understand correctly that the workshop that's being held on the 14th of March is part of our REN grant, was, was part of our um, application? Yes. Um, REN's mission is education. It's the Water Resources Education Network. So with every grant, they, um, they ask you to, to spread the word, and, um, and they encourage you to do, to do uh, various workshops to get people interested in what they can do at home in order to um, improve the water quality 
in the state. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get Chris, I'd like to move up your liaison report to now, if we could. I'm sorry, are there any more announcements? I meant to ask, no. Um, that way, in case you need to run out, I, I, I think, uh, Mark, is, is that you? Yeah. Oh, great, nice to Hi. meet you. Um, in case our discussion with Mark runs late, um, we get your report, so how about it? Thank you. Um, uh, for Parks and Rec, uh, our January meeting, we had a, um, uh, a leadership change as we do every year, and Andy Santillo is the new chairperson of the Parks and Rec board. I'm the new vice chair of that board. Uh, and we do have one opening uh, at this point in time for uh, somebody to join that board. Uh, I'm sure Luke kept you apprised, but just kind of a summary of things that we worked on during 2014. We worked on the cell tower projects. Uh, I can talk more about that if you weren't given information, but I'm assuming that you got some as that was going on. A recommendation was made to the board, to the board of commissioners uh, to consider installing uh, up to three cell towers in up to three parks uh, in the township. Um, uh, the benefits being the income realized from those cell towers A and B, the improved communications from those cell towers uh, for individuals as well as for emergency management services. Uh, and uh, I guess the third thing is that if, if we don't do it, somebody else will. Cabrini's looking at it. Um, Radnor Valley Country Club's looking at it. So there's other parties that could take, put, put them up and, and realize the income from them. So uh, that's something that's now on the Board of Commissioners' plates. Uh, we also uh, worked on the discussions about the Clement Chrome Park and the uh, master plan there to redesign that park. As you may know, they received a grant for $250,000. They're working on a second grant for a half million dollars. And uh, the Board of Commissioners voted to approve moving forward with uh, drawing up all the final plans and working documents uh, for that park. And that won't go forward until the million two to million four it will cost uh, is raised. Um, and then uh, last thing is at our meeting in January, we're working on putting together our list of priorities for 2015, uh, obviously with input from the Board of Commissioners and staff as to what uh, they'd like us to be working on this year. A quick question in terms of raising that money. Um, are you seeing in some way an earmarking or you know, collection of the uh, new open space recreation fee thing that's uh, being assessed for all new developments? I mean, that was supposed to be for I would think things like that. Yeah, there uh, we, we're in February. We should get a report on the uh, the dollars that have been raised to date and what they're expecting to come in. They're expecting a significant uh, influx of funds from the Villanova project over the next couple of years. So, uh, yeah, I think the thought is that if they can get seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in grants and the township and their capital budget maybe has a quarter million dollars in there, that those funds can be used to fill that gap, the extra two to three hundred thousand dollars. And. Uh, that's about it for uh, report on can, Parks and Rec. Can you just quick remind us what the project is at Clement Crone? What, what does it look like? Sure, it's basically a complete revitalization of that park. Um, if you're familiar with that park, the, the playground is on the front side of the park, very close to Conestoga Road, so it's kind of in a, a dangerous and a loud and kind of an unfriendly environment for the kids using that and the parents using that. Uh, then as you move back in that park, there's a ball field for the, the little, little leaguers, uh, there's a ball field there for, I guess, t-ball for the most part they play there. And then further back, there are a couple of tennis courts and there's an old, you know, restroom building, et cetera, back in there. Unfortunately, it's dark back there. There's no roads really going back there. So there's been vandalism over the years. It's fallen into disrepair. Uh, and I'd say that that park, at least in the 25 years I've lived here, has never had any money spent on it to to make it have a park-like feel and a comfortable feel for the neighborhood. Garrett Hill neighborhood uses that, not exclusively, but significantly. Um, and so being one of the older parks and one of the larger used parks, I think that was targeted as one of the, one of the priorities for, uh, uh, for an improvement project. Do, do you have any contact with the Garrett Hill organization that installed the, uh, that rain garden in, in that park? Um, I believe the rain garden is on the is on as you're entering the parking lot it's on, on your right hand, on your right -hand side. side yeah there's a creek that runs through there and right that rain garden is on the right hand side there and i know that 
Tammy uh, Cohen uh, has ongoing communication with that group. I'm not sure if they're involved with this specific part of the, pro the project, but the Garrett Hill community is very involved with this project. Uh, there's, a, there's a Garrett Hill group of, of residents that are, are very involved and have given input and uh, um, are behind the project. That sounds great. I was just hoping, you know, making sure that uh, that nice little ring guard didn't get yeah, plowed, plowed under. Or I don't think that there's any chance no, of that happening. I don't think no. so either. No. <laughs> well, Chris, could I ask, um, we had begun discussions when Luke was uh, the liaison on Fenimore uh, Park. There's a pond there that has had some, it just gets very covered <coughs> with algae, and we would sort of talked a little bit about working with Park and Rec on on maybe trying to see if there are ways that it can be cleaned up a little bit. And I don't know if that's something that maybe one of your members would be interested in, you know, working with us on, um, or, you know, if there's any, any kind of, you know, uh, procedure we should uh, think about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, we've, what we've done in the last year in Parks and Rec is because we're, we're blessed to live in a township with so many parks, uh, I've been on Parks and Rec for three years, and I still don't know all the parks. There's 20 to 25 parks. It's impossible for, you know, a person who works for a living has kids at home <laughs> to really know the parks. So we split the parks up. So each Parks and Rec member has three or four parks as their responsibility. So I think the best thing for, with regard to that is for me to identify who has that responsibility for that park, put them in touch with you that so that there can be some communication about that. Because what, what we do with our individual parks is we put together a... Uh, uh, probably a semi-annual report, um, a small report on each park saying, here's the condition of it, here's what we think is needed short term, here's what we think is needed long term. We compile all of that and provide that to the township staff for public works, et cetera, and for budgeting, for capital budgeting when there's needs, et, et, et cetera. So um, I'll, put you, I'll put you in touch you. with the person that that's in charge of that could park. I, could I also ask, sure. uh, uh, with the township's purchase of the, some of the Ardrossan property, is, is, is Parks and Rec uh, going to be involved in thinking about the, you know, the conversion of some of that property into park, public park? And I know there are various, various thoughts about how to do it. Is that something on your plate this year, or is that sort of a out year? Yeah, my guess on that is, yes, we will be involved, A. B, I think the majority of that is going to be open space. There won't be a whole lot going on there. There's a, some discussion about some trails. Uh, et cetera, but uh, I think at this point everybody's taking a, a deep breath and just kind of uh, um, catch, you know, just catching their breath with regard to the purchase of it, et cetera. Uh, this board of commissioners, um, uh, you know, put a lot of time and effort into it. It was a, it was a big, it was an important uh, move for them as a group. Uh, so when that does happen, we will we will be involved, but. You know, right now the, the goal had been to get the purchase completed, which they did, and there hasn't been a whole lot of talk yet on planning. But we will have uh, one of our members will be the, the focus person for our Drossen as well as for the Wills. Yeah. I don't think anything's going to happen in the next six yeah. months. Let us know if there's anything for the Will do. Chris, you had uh, mentioned that uh, our liaison is going to we're, we're going to be on a rotating basis now with the Parks and Rec, where <laughs> you're going to send a a different member each uh, to each month, yeah. sort of just sort of rotate through. Correct. I think that's great, and I think um, <coughs> it would be very interesting maybe if the if the member who comes, uh, let's say they're they're in charge with three to four parks, uh, they could just you know g give us an uh, an up to date uh, report on what's new, what's trending, <laughs> with the uh, with the parks that they're in, they're in charge of. Um, and I think that would be very interesting for us. Yeah, uh, I'll make a note of that, and uh, we'll also try and get you. We did a, a sign-up sheet that's still in process, but try and get over to you the list of who's attending the meeting so you have that ahead of time. And uh, I'll make mention of that at our next meeting that uh, you know, like them to spend three or four minutes on their, the, the particular parks that they're responsible for. Excellent. Great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your report. Mark, are you prepared to... Yeah. Step to the plate. All right, great. Um, I'll go up and talk on the microphone. Yeah. Can you hear me? No, we're gonna need you to. We need you to uh, step up to the. Oh, these microphones. Yeah, I guess these work. I can. 
Does that work? That works perfectly. I'll just do a quick introduction. Um, Mark Knight, a resident, Radnor Township resident, approached uh, Commissioner um, Jim Higgins uh, with a request for Radnor Township to uh, create a resolution that asked the state of Pennsylvania, the, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, um, to create a, uh, green, uh, a carbon reduction plan for the, for the uh, power plants in our state uh, that uh, would exceed the power, or uh, the green, um, I keep saying greenhouse gas, but I guess they, they call it carbon emission reduction plan that the, uh, the federal government, the EPA, has put out there. Um, uh, several uh, municipalities in the state had submitted um, a resolution in that regard. And um, Mark asked uh, Commissioner Higgins if Radner would do so. Uh, do I have that ballpark? That's, yeah, that's ballpark. Pretty much <laughs> it, that that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, I um, appreciate you coming out. Mark. And I brought um, for everybody. I brought uh, the, a sample resolution, and then a copy of the city of York's their resolution. And I did, and I did distribute that. Okay, uh, you, to you all, everybody got those to all the members. Yep. Good. Um, we had uh, bantered this about uh, around the holidays, which I believe is right around when we first got notice of this, and we had some discussion uh, via email. We'd, we haven't had a meeting since the time when, uh, when Mark sent, you sent that out. Um, but I wanted you to come in, Mark, to uh, maybe frame this a little bit more simply for us uh, to, so we could hear from you. Um, you know why you thought uh, how, how you thought we got to where we're at right now in terms of uh, the the federal the, the federal plan and why you think it's important that um, Pennsylvania sure. step well, up to the plate for something more uh, drastic. Right. I mean, right now the power plants there are limits on things like arsenic and mercury, but there aren't any national limits on carbon emission. Pennsylvania, we're one of the three big. Uh, em emitters of carbon pollution with all our power plants. They, they burn a lot of coal. So uh, we really need to get the... If people believe in uh, climate change, which I do, um, and the, since the climate's changing, we really need the technologies there to clean power plants. Other states have power plants with the technology. The EPA just wants uh, stand each state to set their standards. So we're to, this is sort of like a public comment um, coming from different communities in Pennsylvania. Just like you said, just we want, we're requesting that the PA Department of Environmental Protection follow what the EPA has um, ruled states to do. So, so is, other, the, is the e, is the pencil is Pennsylvania required to yeah. or they're required to follow this? We're required plan. to follow it, but it sort of get, it could get pushed down the road. I mean, right now Casey's sort of hemming and hawing about you know trying to push it down the road. So a lot of environmental groups are trying to get him to you know, make sure it happens now rather than just kick it down the road. So we've, we're getting so far, I think we've gotten a lot of different municipal municipalities across the state to just say, hey, let's do this now. So I just thought Radnor, we're, we, tr we try to be a clean community. I just thought it would be a good fit for us to write the resolution as well. You know, I was looking at the resolution and thinking about uh, the carbon issue. Um, one of the ways that an immediate way to reduce uh, carbon emission is to maybe resolve to buy power that's generated from natural gas as opposed to coal. 
Sure. Or, or you know, other even cleaner energy, you know, wind and solar. But sure, yeah, I mean, less demand for burning coal is certainly going to cut down. But, I mean, to, would, do you think it would make sense to incorporate that in the um, In the resolution? resolution? As sure. a new, I mean, as a new thing. Also, in one of the sections, it says the Clean Power Plan gives Pennsylvania the opportunity to design its own plan to meet its carbon reduction targets by investing in renewable energy and energy efficiency. I just meant as a way station on the, you know, we couldn't replace every coal plant in the next year or 10 years, but. Well, they're not really talking about replacing coal. They're just talking about, I mean, there are ways to uh, have the emissions be cleaned up. I mean, that technology exists. Other states use it. It's it's not necessarily cheap, but it is available and mm -hmm. it's it's doable. Could I, I wanted to uh, just point out that this is the EPA's clean power plan. Uh, this was introduced or passed uh, uh, last year, middle, yeah, middle uh, of last June year. June 2nd, 2014. Uh, called for a 32% or 30% uh, reduction um, in carbon emissions. I believe it's 32%. Um, when, when you read this, uh, this uh, resolution, the sample resolution, it doesn't necessarily uh, set a higher goal. It doesn't say, well, we should shoot for 40%. It just says, uh, what, is it, what is it basically yeah, it, in trying to encourage the this Pennsylvania well, DEP it, to do? It, at least try to meet the 32% or even, you know, be optimistic and try to exceed it. So it's not, it's, not, it's not intended to say, we, we believe you're 32%, because they're being mandated by this clean, uh, clean power plan to attempt to right. go after that goal of 32%. Right. But this, our, this resolution is not really intended to say, uh, we think you should up the goal to, no, to no, 40%. No, no, no. No, it's not, it's it's not so intended no, it's to do not. that. But I gather from what you said earlier that the, EPA, um, the, the EPA's uh, plan allows for deferral or doesn't have a clear timetable? Yeah, with. there isn't a necessarily a timetable. I mean, I don't know the, the ins and outs of the, uh, of the whole uh, clean power plan. But I know, um, and I, I, I can get back to you on something like that. I'm not sure what the timetable is, but I know, but I know I've read that at least I don't want to keep bringing up Senator Casey, but he sort of wants, he's still hemming and hawing about when to actually start doing this. <laughs> and there is a period of, for public comment, which actually expired uh, in December, but the, even something, even Radner passing or doing this resolution certainly would help. So you think, uh, even though this deadline is passed, you think that by Radner expressing their, their, you know, that they put some import on, oh, sure. on this, would, could encourage, uh, could encourage the swifter enactment exactly. of the clean. Well, and I think, you know, as more and more municipalities jump on board, just like we are sort of following the lead of some before us, you know, I think you have more that would adopt this sort of thing. I mean, I know uh, Swarthmore has, Lancaster City Council, Jenkintown City Council of Bethlehem, York. So a lot of, a lot of municipalities have. So is this a, a resolution it. that we would recommend to the Board of Commissioners as opposed to a, a resolution that we would issue ourselves? Well, it's up to you guys. I'm not sure how. Well, I think we need to talk about that. Um, this is sort of on the fringes of our purview, <laughs> right? Um, we have a strong commitment at this time to reduce greenhouse gas emissions here in the township, and we are fighting that battle. Uh, 
every month, and we have too few successes, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a couple of significant failures right at the end of 2014, <laughs> where we thought we were riding high, and then yeah. we had a couple of failures. Um, I think we, we need to, we, we will certainly keep our focus on the, in, in the local. Now, whether or not we can throw our hat in the, into this ring, um, I guess that's up for discussion. I would suggest that um, this this kind of a this kind of a um, I, I wouldn't take this resolution lightly. In that, I believe when it's presented to the board of commissioners, it really needs to be presented with some passion and some understanding of the matter of why it's important and and that everything we that is stated in the resolution is fact, right? Um, so we have yet to have anybody particular on this on this board uh, sort of stand up and say this is going to be my baby and I'm going to run I'm going to run this all the way through. So we can talk about it. Yeah. But, but go ahead, Slim. Well, I, I, I you know I agree and and Mark I, I think this is terrific that you're coming forward with this and as Josh was saying this is definitely in line with what some of the major initiatives that the EAC has been trying to do at the township level. Um, so uh, thank you for, for bringing this forward. I also think Josh is right that, you know, uh, at the Board of Commissioners level, uh, if it got there, you know, I think they could, you know, they would want to know a, a few sort of background facts that might be helpful to support the, the, the concept. For example, when I read this, at first read, uh, it seems like the EPA clean power plan uh, is quite ambitious, calling for a 32% reduction uh, in carbon by, you know, in, in not, not too distant future. On the other hand, I've, I did a little bit of research on it, and it, I came away thinking, you know what, that's not that ambitious uh, a plan to to, to reach the clean power plan, 32% reduction. Um, for example, uh, one source was suggesting that the, the state is already at or beyond the goal for uh, natural gas use. So while I'm not an expert, uh, I do think that there's a lot to suggest that this this is a really important issue and something that, you know, there's a lot of, support, you know, uh, uh, reasons to go even beyond what the EPA is doing. Um, but I think we, you know, as, as a group, it might be very helpful to work with you. Sure, and maybe, yeah, I'm available. You know, maybe, maybe uh, you know, if we have questions like, you know, what's the, what's the case? What's the case to go beyond the 32%? What are the components of the Clean Power Plan? What, what's that calling for? How's Pennsylvania doing on that plan already? And then we could maybe at the next meeting say, you know what, this looks like 32 is, 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 is actually not that ambitious, and we totally understand why it's reasonable to call for something beyond that. Or maybe we all come back and say, you know what, 32 looks like a pretty good number. And, and we would, you know, might think in terms of yeah, I a resolution let, that calls for meeting it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't let the what the percentage, you know, stall the, uh, the overall resolution, at least coming out and backing the 32%. I'd be I'm th I'd be thrilled with that. The it, it, maybe maybe that I I missed something on this. Maybe there ought to be another an, another whereas on on that. Is that what you call them? Whereas. <laughs> yeah. uh, in that uh, there's evidence that Pennsylvania is stalling or is not interested in implementing. Or there's do, do you know what I'm saying? Like here we are. It feels like we're sort of just endorsing something that's already a matter of fact and a matter of well, that's in a, a matter question. of course. I mean, are, is the state already mandated to comply with the EPA clean well, power? Well, uh, the way I read it, um, the the state can either direct it or or the EPA might get get involved. So okay, so I, it's sort of as a maybe as a backstop if right. the state doesn't so, do it. Yeah, again, um, I'm not 
as well versed as I guess I should should be, but I believe if the Department of if Pennsylvania's Department of Environmental Protection doesn't do it, at some point the EPA will step in. Um, has the new governor signaled uh, his position in some way? I as think to this? he has acknowledged climate change, which is always a good step. But I mean, has he addressed this particular? Uh, I don't think so. I actually don't don't know. I mean, if you guys want to come up with some questions, like a list before you go up against the board, you know, I'd be happy. And you can email me the questions. I'd be happy to get back with you know, meet with anything or or meet with someone whoever wants to be the one that's going to go up with the board. I'd be happy to meet with them. You know, outside the sort of official meeting. In your research of the various resolutions, have you seen um, exhibits or attachments that we should see that were relied upon by you other know, councils? Mo the ones I've seen are all sort of line up with the city of York's. They're all, I mean, they, um, they got into uh, a little bit about the, the West Nile thing on theirs. No, I, I meant, um, let's say even the city of York, is there other material that the city council relied upon that may have been circulated or presented with this resolution? Oh, you know, that I'm not, I'm, I'm not aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just acknowledge something that Dan wrote in an email back when this first surfaced last month. Um, uh, one of the uh, whereases, or, or maybe several of them, on uh, this, the York, I believe it was the York uh, resolution, York, Pennsylvania resolution, uh, suggested that um, there were some extreme weather events, uh, fairly specific events. Uh, that affected their t their municipality, and I'm not sure if it was a direct implication or a uh, just sort of a you know they threw it out there. But yeah, they yeah they I mean right on the first whereas it's recent ice storm in February uh, disaster declaration left more than seventy thousand New York residents without power. We've certainly been without power around. Yeah. Yes, and, and in the Philadelphia area, was not you know. the and greatest. by saying by saying that, um, uh, the the first whereas starts with the city of York has already experienced the impacts of climate change, and I, I just wanted to uh, just repeat and sort of agree with what something Dan said that I'm not, I am a believer in in uh, climate change, and I think. Uh, I think probably all of us are. I hope most people. Are <laughs> yeah. council are. I think we all are, but uh, we are we are uncomfortable uh, attempting to attribute a specific weather happening or weather uh, occurrence to climate change. Uh, although I do understand that uh, climate change can increase the frequency of of those types of events, it's it might be a uh, not a non-starter, but a um, it might offer uh, less resistance to, um, at the board or, uh, other, or, or any other eyes that look at this thing um, if you don't attempt to do that kind of a um, causal, cause and relate, um, effect relationship. Just I mean, I guess yeah, that, you that can was always uh, strike that the first whereas. That was kind of the first thing that jumped well, out at me. Now, obviously, this is the first time I've read this. I just read the, the York resolution. And I just, you know, offer my opinion is that it's very short on facts. Uh, and I would think that that's something we would want to have in there is facts in terms of what are Pennsylvania's carbon emissions versus the contiguous states. What are the emissions targets that we're trying to get to? What is the, you know, the cost of the residents of Pennsylvania to do that, to accomplish that? You know, get some meat into this. Have you read the sample resolution? Uh, I have not, no. Yeah, that, I mean, just take a, I mean, that, York, that definitely uh, has added some more uh, specific uh, 
events for uh, to, to their resolution. The sample's a little more, does have, they state national climate assessment is identified, uh, U.S. Global Change Research Program. So there's some, the, you, you might want to just take a peek at that one. And I know the first uh, whereas does say uh, the city's experience impacts from global warming. You know, I, I'd feel comfortable striking that if that's going to ruffle feathers with. Yeah, I, I, my, from my perspective, when I mention that, I don't really have a problem acknowledging or, you know, mention the, the belief that climate warming, climate change can create these extreme events. My thing is to say that this specific thing was caused by that. I mean, before right. there was climate change, there were nasty storms and hurricanes right. and all that. So it's really about the specific thing. Yeah, and really I mean, the I, same would apply to the West Nile virus. I mean, again, I don't doubt that increased temperatures are going to, you know, increase the the breeding ground for these these bugs, but uh, to specifically attribute that you know West Nile virus increased in York because of this, uh, that's where my issue is. Sure. Well, I, I in an effort to uh, sort of wrap this up, maybe I uh, well I would ask one thing, um, uh, Mark. Would I think the, I, and I and I really like Chris's uh, comment in that feels like there might be some facts missing from our whereas uh, and I would like to see a little bit more research put into this specifically with regard to um, the emissions reductions and the goals and what's attainable and um, and what Pennsylvania is actually doing about the EPA uh, rule uh, or plan and I was gonna ask Mark um, sure you mean to me about the t the timetable yeah, I guess and, about and the also just what's involved. What what is in the in the EPA clean power plan? What what is it calling for specifically for Pennsylvania? For Pennsylvania, okay. And then some help in terms of are those uh, ambitious uh, parts of the plan, or are they frankly not that much of a stretch uh, in terms of what's likely to happen, even if the EPA doesn't do anything. <laughs> Or the state doesn't do anything. So, and, and I don't mean to I don't mean to imply that I want to drop this entirely in your in your lap, yeah. Mark. I don't mind us doing a little bit of work um, in moving this forward, but I do want to find out from you: is, Would you be uh, would you be comfortable with um, taking a a draft resolution that we might help you with uh, that is based in part on the one that you've provided already? Uh, and take that and, and present that to Commissioner uh, Higgins and, and ask him to be uh, sure. the, oh, yeah. the champion of it? I'd be very comfortable with that. Okay, good. Um, I think that might, be, that might be something that we would like to do too. I'm, like, like we said, we, we have some, some battles ahead of us uh, and I wanna make sure that this one doesn't slip in front of those others or, or trip us up at all. But we do want to help out on this. Okay. Um, so do you want me to, I'll try to get a little bit more information on what the uh, EPA has really um, deemed what, ha what this each state can or can't do and what the time, to, what the, each state needs to do and what the timetable is. Yeah. We, would it be okay if we gathered up a few questions after oh, sure. the meeting, sent them to you, and if you if you had a chance to look at some of them and help us out, and then uh, I don't know if there's a time frame that you you're trying to work within, but we could certainly invite you to the next meeting to continue the discussion, which is you know it's very important, and I think we want to get it you know in a good position. So would okay. that be okay from yeah, your yeah that's, yeah we'll send you that's some, fine. by email we'll send you send some me questions. some questions i'll follow up with that and the i'd be happy to meet with jim higgins about with sort of a tentative proposal just to see what he thinks yeah. maybe maybe once this is in good shape or once it's passed by the eac you could take it forward to to uh commissioner higgins and yeah. others who 
might be interested. That'd that be great. Sounds good. That'd be great. Well, thanks, okay. Mark. I appreciate you coming in. Well, thanks, Thank everybody. You, Mark. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, um, let's see where we're at here. Yeah, I think uh, that would be a good thing to talk about while we still have Chris here. So I'm going to slide that discussion of... Um, uh, it's down here on new business. Um, I'll slide that up to now. So we were asked uh, by Leo Burnaby of the uh, Radnor Township School District to review the EAC's findings from a 2008 um, special meeting that they had regarding env potential environmental concerns or lack thereof related to artificial turf fields. And the 2008 meeting uh, was in, on March 18th, 2008, and none of the members of that Environmental Advisory Council are presently sitting on the council now. But we do have the minutes, which are seven pages long, and it is my understanding that these minutes of this meeting were presented to the uh, to the school or the board, it was, it was to the board, uh, as their sort of findings on the matter and, and their, and their uh, recommendations and whatnot. So there was no other report other than these minutes. Um, we've been asked to review this, and it is our sort of uh, belief, and, I, and Chris uh, explained this to me a little earlier, that there's a, there's a potentially might be a uh, some further addition of artificial turf at the high school uh, in planning. So I'm sort of reading between the lines and, and assuming that that might be why we're, asked, we're being asked to check, take a look at this. I, in, to, to my knowledge, there's no other reason that this is being re-raised. There's no specific environmental threat that somebody has, uh, has concerns about is what I'm driving at. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure if that's what he's referring to. There has been discussion about okay. replacing that first turf field at the high school uh, adjacent to Radnor Chester Road and expanding the footprint of that field a little bit. Um, so I don't know if this is re with regard to it. I think that when you do provide feedback to him, yep. you ought to ask him, what is it in reference to? Is and he talking about the high school? Is he right. talking about one of the other schools? You're right. It would be help, helpful for us to have that context. Yeah, you're, you're right. I, Strike everything I said from the record. Back, start over again. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea why we're asking to do this, and I did I request that information. I just haven't got it yet. Okay. Um, so what I uh, I'm not sure if all of you guys have read this. Uh, no. Okay. Um, I have. I'm going to read two paragraphs from it. Okay. I'm going to read you the first introductory paragraph, and then one paragraph that I think kind of sums up the findings. Um, So the EAC was requested by the Board of Commissioners to review environmental aspects of the proposed installation of an artificial turf field at the high school and provide input to the BOC before their next meeting, at which time they're expected to consider a resolution concerning funding of that field. The BOC requests input from the EAC, the Board of Health, Parks and Rec, all on the proposed installation of that turf field. Uh, the EAC had previously considered the issue regarding the middle school installation. Um, uh, this next paragraph is kind of important. Uh, I want to reiterate this now. Uh, Ms. Gatanda, who was then the uh, chair of, the, of this group, stated that the scope of the EAC's meeting would focus only on the environmental aspects of the proposed installation of the turf field and that the EAC would not address costs or funding, strictly human health related issues, or recreational preferences, i.e. which one is better to run on or something like that. Those were for the other boards. Uh, and then they, they, uh, they had a lot of, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of public comment, I believe, at this meeting. It was well attended, from what I understand. Uh, the la and then the next paragraph I wanted to read. Um, huh. is the conclusion, basically. This is the input that they gave to the commissioners. It is the view of the EAC that, in our collective judgment, we have not identified an environmental basis 
upon which the Board of Commissioners should reject the proposed installation of the turf at the high school. And while they have not concluded that there is no potential for environmental harm, we do not believe that an environmental basis for rejecting turf has been established. <laughs> well written by, a, by an attorney. <laughs> environmental attorney, yeah, yeah. Uh, should, the, should the board com decide to support the installation of turf, we do recommend that in making uh, the turf product selection consideration be given to uh, evaluating, evaluating various rubber infill options and their relative benefits and also evaluating the ability of the turf and the infill to be recycled when it's, when it's done. Uh, I should make a comment that the turf is actually a uh, nylon and uh, uh, some plastic uh, component that's the green grass stuff. And then there's infill material that they put in, un, in between those grass fibers. And that's commonly made of uh, uh, ground up uh, tires, which they call tire crumb. It's also uh, uh, sometimes sand and some other, other uh, materials, and sometimes a blend of those materials. Um, yeah, so this was 2008. In the seven years since that time, there certainly has been more articles written on the subject. Um, the, the EPA had provided an opinion on, on the use of tire crumb uh, regarding you know the environmental aspects of, of, of that, and f and they did it they did, had a study done before this meeting uh, in 2008, and the, and the EAC was able to review that, and that what that uh, study found no no uh, issues related to the specific focus of that study. It, did, it didn't find any problems. Since that time. Uh, the EPA has maybe softened their stance a bit, and they now say that that study was um, not flawed, but very limited in that it only evaluated four uh, uh, fields and certain types of tire crumb and certain types of certain <laughs> types of uh, astroturf, not every single kind of astroturf or, or tire crumb that exists. Okay, so they have recently softened their stance on their website and you can read there and you can read it on their on their website so uh that's that's kind of what, what where it stands I, I think we ought to um have just a brief discussion on how to move forward uh with this to um to be able to come to a uh to be able to present the to the school or, or maybe I'm, I'm not sure if we're being asked by the board of commissioners or by just the school to have an opinion on this um on this subject, but I'd like to get to them in the next uh, couple of months with uh, with an opinion. So, how should we go about doing that? Anybody? Well, uh, I I would just say that in reading the minutes, um, it's clear that uh, the EAC did look at a lot of studies and did a lot of homework, um, and I think at the very least we we should uh, make some effort to see if there's an update uh, on on these studies and sort of in line with what you were saying with the EPA, see if, you know, the studies that we can see um, are coming to a different conclusion and, and uh, you know, maybe not reinvent the wheel on all the studies that were reviewed, but to see if there are new ones that, that uh, have been published since 2008 and, uh, you know, try to do a similar kind of review of the studies. Um, and I guess uh, uh, the other thought I had was this looks like, at least in the context of 2008, when they were going to be building something, it looked like it was generating a lot of public interest and attention. You know, maybe we should make it clear that we are considering this and, you know, make it uh, publicly known that the EAC is, you know, conducting an update on this, and folks who want to come and express their views are, are welcome to at, you know, whenever the next meeting is or, or whenever we'd like to do it so that yeah. in case people who really know a lot about this want to come and share their views, I think it would be useful. I agree. To yeah. make it a... It did make our agenda, yeah. which is the first step in making, this, making the public know that we're, right. we're looking at this. Um, 
I, but I don't this know meeting a special, is a special notice, you know, I don't know. And, and maybe it also somewhat depends on what you hear from the school district in terms of, oh, yeah, we are about to build a whole new one, or whether it's just, hey, we want to just make sure for the existing ones that there's no major new findings, you know, that might, yeah. you know, you know, it might drive how much public interest there would be. Yeah, I think it'd be really important in that notice to make it very clear that we would only be talking about the environmental issues and not the health issues because it wouldn't want the place to fill up with people who are going to talk about, you know, cancer threats and MRSA and all these other things that have been, you know, possibly linked to turf fields. I also think that when you find out from Leo what the purpose of his inquiry is you'll know if it's a replacement of an existing field there's not much change going to happen you're not uh, under the gun to get information back to him quickly uh, if he's planning a whole new field in three months then you want to try and jump on it review some of those studies and get some public participation on that so the feedback you get from him probably is going to help guide you as to where this falls in your agenda going forward I think it also would make sense to ask him if he initiated the same request cycle that was used before. In other words, has he gone to the Board of Health? I did ask that question, and mm -hmm. I haven't got any answers yet. Okay. I think that's a really good question because while our focus is environmental, uh, if this is the only you know group that's looking at it and somebody has very important health information to share, <laughs> this may be the only opportunity. So. If he if he is only you know asking the EAC, I think we might just welcome anybody who wants to come and discuss it, understanding that it could get a little broader in the discussion than than specifically our role. I actually disagree with that. I think that if he's not giving it to the Board of Health and only sending it to us, then we just urge him to give it to the Board of Health as well, um, because I don't think you know it's not within our jurisdiction to talk about the health issues and. It's not, it, it, we're not going to get up to speed. On well, that. and I wouldn't say that we would then uh, take on the role of uh, making any kind of recommendations on the health front. Uh, but if he is not planning to ask anybody else uh, to make public comment available or, you know, discussion available, you know, I think it, it uh, would be reasonable to allow people to make comments beyond the environmental ones. Except I think when, it's unrealistic to think that a project that involved a major installation of turf would go forward without approval by the school board or the board of commissioners. So there will be a chance for public comment that doesn't involve this group. So I don't think we have to kind of try to be more than we are. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you on that. I think um, that the school board itself ought to be considering this more than us in, in some respects. I mean, they might want our input. He may want to deliver our input, so to speak, and say they, there was an opinion from 2008 and it's the same or it's different or whatever now. But um, uh, the Board of Health should be in this. Okay. Well, uh, you know, this is all um, strictly hypothetical at this point because uh, I'm still waiting for a response back on who's, who else has been asked to review this and why we're reviewing this. So I should know more by, the, uh, by this time next week. And I'll, I'll distribute to everybody the. Uh, and I, I the suppose we, we have the option of, uh, you know, if if there's no plan to take it to other boards, we could refer it. We could say, hey, there does look like there's some interesting activity here. FYI, to the Board of Health, do you want to do you want to look at this? So instead of our taking on that piece of the the puzzle, we could just refer it to to them if that seems like it's needed. Okay, I'm going to uh, move along unless there's any other comment on that topic. Thanks, Chris. We are way out of whack here, so why don't we just go completely out of whack and finish our liaison reports. Skip. Well, conveniently, this will be brief, I guess. Um, I was well, with a, number, a couple of uh, other planning commissioners. Uh, we were out of, I was out of the country in December. It was a brief meeting. Um, there wasn't a meeting in January, and there will be a significant meeting in February. The agenda is not yet set. It'll probably include Villanova. That was brief. 
Okay, thanks. Um, in their work group reports, I'll start off about the uh, green team. I have yet to find out when the next green team meeting is. I did request that information, but uh, Melissa, she'll probably get back to me uh, after our meeting uh, tonight. Uh, but I wanted to mention about our electric, um, our, our green power purchasing effort. Uh, it is still somewhat stalled in that, um, but, I, but I can't remember the last update I've given, so maybe it's not stalled uh, since the last time I gave an update. The uh, township has received bids from at least two energy providers. Uh, one is called Constellation Energy. And the other is a uh, nonprofit outfit from out of DC that um, actually submits their own uh, request for pricing. Uh, but we, they're called Groundswell, so we did get a, a, a quote from Groundswell. Um, the uh, township uh, is going to uh, attempt to move forward with the green power purchase, but they need to get the uh, board commissioners approval first, they have determined. And they are trying to get on to the, a, a February agenda at the Board of Commissioners to get approval. And it's my understanding that this is a, um, a uh, all of the electrical energy that the Radnor uh, Township purchases is going to be supplied uh, by wind power, okay? Um, that's an oversimplification of the uh, of the of the actual uh, physics that goes on behind it, but um, it's not a 50%. It's not a 10%. It's a 100% of their power is going to be wind uh, wind power, and I believe it's a it's national wind. And national wind means um, it can come from anywhere in the country, and generally it comes from some of the the cheaper places to produce that wind, which is happens to be in the in the Midwest, in Texas. So um, it is one of the biggest goals on our greenhouse gas action plan. I just want to reiterate that was to was to was to achieve something uh, probably less ambitious than this. So we are pleased that this might happen, and we're a little disappointed it's taken this long, but we're getting close. And if it gets passed in February, I think we'd we'd all be pretty pleased with that. I, I <clears throat> second that. <laughs> I think uh, it's terrific that the township has. Uh, uh, and the green team has been taking uh, uh, the leadership in exploring options, getting bids, uh, bringing Constellation in to do presentations. It's been it's been uh, it's been good work. And you know, I, I would say that we <coughs> we we uh, 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 are close on this. I I think we probably would uh, uh, do well to consider if there's a, even a, a further step. Um, at some point that could be considered in terms of um, looking at solar panels and things like that uh, in the township because while national wind is great uh, we uh, you know I, I'm uh, of the view that uh, locally produced green power is even better <laughs> and if we can move toward maybe not immediately using the national wind as a first step in a good direction, um, not terribly expensive, um, uh, and uh, but with a, a larger goal down the road toward uh, something like, you know, solar panels or other things like that, hopefully we, we could, uh, you know, build in that direction. So uh, not to in any way undermine the, the, the national wind, that's a great step, but to just sort of set the table towards something, uh, you know, maybe even even more ambitious down the road. I should point out that the the power switch that they're contemplating is going to save the township money. Okay, so it is uh, it is not a massive windfall, but I think it's a real numbers. I think it's um, I think it might be uh, five digits, right? We, I think the last we heard it was some, something like fifteen to twenty thousand um, dollars, and some of that goes back toward paying a little bit more for the wind, national wind, but still a net saving. Net savings. Ten to fifteen thousand um, dollars, and that I think goes a little toward the idea of, well, if you are saving ten to fifteen thousand dollars, 
with national wind in future years if you if you know maybe some of those savings uh, could be reinvested toward financing something more ambitious like like a solar panel or, or, or something like that so and it's you know in our greenhouse gas action plan we originally had the idea of some sort of maybe not official but some sort of accounting that can help people remember oh we, we save money here you know so this would be a great example of how we might be able to help make the case that some of the savings could be used uh, you know in in green power purchasing uh, uh, such as solar panels just a thought for you know for future discussion but but um, I think it's great I think the township uh, has uh, made some good steps and hopefully they'll continue to do it um, uh, besides the investment in uh, maybe solar, uh, I don't know if they've ever done a study to determine if there's any geothermal opportunities for all the different township buildings. It's a really good question. I mean, the, as you know, the, 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 the school district has done some fairly large geothermal uh, work, and uh, this area is is one of the better areas for geothermal um, power. So, So it's a very good question. The you know that's that's probably the next step out in terms of an, ambitious because those are pretty big projects, but um, you know I think it's something that could well be on 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 the uh, on the longer term uh, plan. But uh, I think the payback, if that's one of the considerations, is faster maybe on a geothermal system than a, a solar panel is what i meant do you do you have any sense these days what that is okay well i think that would be something worth uh putting up on the you know the options um but uh i think we're going to you know continue to to work with the green team hopefully getting them over the finish line on national wind and then you know keeping them focused on it because as, as josh said this was the single largest uh uh, uh uh, carbon emission factor for the township when we did the did the uh, uh, the, the greenhouse gas action plan. So if we can really move on this one. I think that mm -hmm. has the biggest impact. I, I make one more comment on this. Um, maybe because this is anticipated to save money, and uh, I'll just be clear that we don't know the exact dollars yet because their bid is very time sensitive. Their their bid is actually like a twenty four our bid because pr the pricing changes so fast on on, on electric um, or it might be 48 hours but well, right before they go to this board of commissioners meeting with their request they're going to have a fresh bid and it's anticipated to be better than our last bid I, if i recall correctly prices were trending in the right direction um, maybe it makes sense to have those potential savings numbers in hand and accompany Ben and Melissa to the Board of Commissioners meeting and uh, explain exactly what you're saying, that we are behind the, uh, the purchase of National Wind, but we would also like to recognize that that's not the ultimate of, uh, of, of goals or whatever, you know, and that, and that and it's maybe explain the, uh, the the pipe dream of uh, the imaginary account you spoke of and say, hey, we'd like to be able to take those $15,000 and invest them towards some new projects. Um, so keep that in mind. Maybe we can, uh, we can sit at that meeting. Okay, moving along. Uh, and do you have anything to discuss regarding green, greenways and open space? No, no, not, not really. Um, is no. This, is that this, something we should remove from the uh, ongoing agenda? I think probably agenda? for the time being. Okay. Probably so. All right. I don't have any. Uh, could Josh? Could ahead. I just uh, on, back on the on the green team? One of our uh, priorities is also uh, encouraging uh, the the greening of the township fleet. We had a we had a sort of a two steps forward, maybe a step back <laughs> um, experience in the sense that. There were three or so hybrid uh, vehicles put into the draft budget uh, in uh, late 2014 uh, uh, over the next couple of few years. Um, unfortunately, uh, 
my understanding is that those have not been uh, uh, accepted into the final budget, um, uh, which is too bad. It, we, we've been making the case that uh, they, you know, hybrids uh, do not have to be that much more expensive uh, than non-hybrids. Uh, but there seem to be some restrictions in terms of what the township can do in terms of, you know, having to buy new cars and things like that. So I think we're going to need to put this back on the green team <laughs> agenda and uh, look for, uh, for opportunities to either reinstate the, the, the same ideas for, for, for next year or, you know, see what, what other opportunities come along for, uh, for greening the fleet. But... Um, can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah, were, were the cars taken out so they're not buying any cars, or they were replaced with non-hybrid cars? Uh, they were replaced with non-hybrids, um, as I understand it. Uh, there was a, you know, the, there was a draft budget that had had them in. When we met with the green team, they indicated that the thinking was, if a uh, a certain budget level was approved, it would be high enough to incorporate some hybrids, that was scaled back. And so in the scaled back budget, uh, it wasn't enough. Um, <laughs> it's a little frustrating because these are rounding errors in a pretty big budget, but uh, you know, it doesn't mean we can't uh, you know, keep it on the agenda and, and keep pushing forward. So I think we will be doing that at the at Thank the you, Sloan. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Thank you. Um, item six on the agenda is community environmental education and awareness. Uh, I, I don't have any uh, new news for that. Anybody have anything they'd like to add to that? Um, old business. Is there any old business? New business, I'd like to mention something. Um, I was at IKEA and I noticed that they accept spent um, compact fluorescent bulbs there and that is nice to know because I have ten, like 10 of them rolling around on my floor in my garage because I have no idea what to do with them um, I did call the hardware store here do it best in Wayne uh, they do not accept compact fluorescence nor any other uh, recycling or hazardous waste stream uh, and they referred me to the township they said oh yeah go to the township I think they I think they take them which is my point that um, Nobody knows what to do with a lot of these things. Uh, and a lot of people look to the township for guidance on that. And I really think that, that we ought to create a um, easy to access guide on what to do with a lot of things that people have questions about. You know, you always hear people asking about batteries. Um, there are, uh, Compact fluorescence. There are, um, you know, toner cartridges. I don't know a lot. A lot of things that people are always wondering about. Um, there's also recycling drives that occur in our in our in township that in, in the private sector. Uh, for instance, you know, bicycles, shoes, winter coats. There's there's all kinds of uh, things that can be recycled or reused, and there's not a clearinghouse or a central location for that kind of information. And I'm wondering if maybe we can spearhead an effort to provide that information to the public. I get a lot of nods. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I think it's, I think and I, I, I it's think something I'd like, to, I'd like to move to the front burner on. Yeah. And I think uh, the Conservancy expressed some interest in, in recycling, uh, so maybe we could work with them uh, as well on it. Um, uh, yep. So, you know, so I guess the, the core idea is, you know, an expanded list of how to recycle various items. Right. Um, some of them are a little off the beaten path, unusual things. So it's not just the recycle stream kind of thing that we have currently. It's what do you do with batteries? What do you do with? Yep. Yep. I think um, it's going to require some effort and it's going to require a more keeping the uh, I don't know if it's going to end up on the EAC website web page but if, if it is it's going to require that to be updated on a more regular basis like a right. like a maybe a quarterly basis as these recycling events happen um, 
you know, obviously we have the, the uh, anything with a plug, electronic thing that that's usually known a couple months in advance. That that could make that list. Um, I looked at that. I looked at our website, our web page, by the way, and it's frankly it's missing some current information. I mean, it, I think the last. You know, the last achievement on there is like 2009, and we've, <laughs> we, we've, we've had some achievements since. Yeah. Then. So if that's any indication, you know, this it, that it might be tough for us to uh, to stay current, but you know, it's just it, it would t it would take uh, just a little bit of effort, right. uh, maybe right. a, a new process to to uh, you know when we have a when we have a new agenda put out um, a week before our meeting, a draft agenda, it should probably maybe should also include a. Um, a note to our webmaster, or whatever you call them, uh, that we'd like this these changes made. Yeah. Or maybe that should be after every meeting. I don't know. Yeah. Um, any other new business? Okay. There's no public comment, so meeting adjourned. Thanks. All right. <laughs>